We've all probably experienced that point in childhood when you wonder, do other people experience the world the same way you do? We can point to something that's blue and agree that it's blue, but do other, do other people experience blue the way you do? You wonder about that for a while, and then you put it aside. It's not that big a problem. But it does point to something very important, that we each have our experience of the world. We experience experience from inside. And there are actually some issues in that area of our experience that really are big problems, i.e., the number, big, number one problem is the problem of stress and suffering and pain. You feel your pain, nobody else can feel it. That's something you experience from within. When a politician says he feels your pain, you wonder what he's feeling, but he's certainly not feeling your pain. He may be sympathizing, and we do sympathize with one another when we see the signs that someone else is in pain. But it's something totally inward. The Buddha's approach is to focus precisely in this area of your awareness, how you experience things from within, how you experience experience from within, and to find a solution to the problems that come from within, also within this path that we're following. He gives us a vocabulary to understand how we experience things from within, because we don't have much of a vocabulary, especially nowadays when science tries to define us in terms of our bodies, and they have a very elaborate vocabulary for that. We get overwhelmed. We forget to notice how do we experience things from within. What can we do about it? What's one of the first things you notice about your experience is you're not totally passive. You can do things. There are certain things you can change, certain things that you can adjust, there are certain things that you can move in certain directions, and there are other things you can't. Take your body, for instance. The Buddha talks about the body as you experience from within, not in terms of the four properties. Solidity, which he calls earth. Liquidity, water. Energy, breath. Or wind. And then warmth, which is fire. And as you're focusing on the breath, it's good to notice we're not here worried about the air that scientists might be able to measure coming in and out through the nose. We're worried about the flow of energy in the body, because this process of adjusting our experience and having intentions and the shaping our experience, the Buddha calls that fabrication. And one of his important insights is that if you do this fabrication in ignorance, you're going to suffer. But if you learn how to do it with knowledge, specifically knowledge of the Four Noble Truths, you can take that fabrication and turn it into a path that leads to something that's totally unfabricated. Now that's the point in the stations you have to take on faith. You haven't reached awakening, you haven't experienced anything that's really unfabricated. Of course, scientists looking at you from outside would say, oh, that's impossible. Human beings can't experience anything that's uncaused. But the Buddha says okay, he's had the experience himself, and he's a reliable sort of person. And then he says, this is how you do it. This is how you look at your experience. Take the body as you feel it from within, when you breathe in and out. What is it like when you try to make yourself aware of the whole body as you breathe in and breathe out? You find there's the movement of the breath, but there are also other movements as well. There's the movement of the liquid in the body. And often we confuse the two when there's a lot of pressure, say, in the chest or pressure in the different parts of the body. It's because not, not so much that the breath is flowing, but we're making the blood flow as well. Of course, the liquid part of the body running up against the solid parts creates pressure. So you have to look at your concept of what's, what's happening here. Breath actually flows very freely. Blood doesn't flow quite so freely because it runs up against obstacles. This is why when you're trying to direct the 
breath energy to different parts of the body. It's not something you push or you squeeze. It's more a matter of mentally going down through your sense of your arms and through your sense of your legs and your torso and your head. And wherever you notice there's any tension, you just allow it to relax. And that's all you have to do. You just do the relaxing. The breath will do the flowing. So you have to be very still. Once things are relaxed, you just maintain that sense of being open and relaxed. I remember when I first went to Thailand, John Fung would talk about working with the breath energy, allowing it to flow here, allowing it to flow there, and people seemed to pick up immediately what he was talking about. For me, it was totally foreign. And it took a while to just sit with the breath to get a sense of what he was talking about. And realized it was happening all the time. These flows of energy, it's just that we've been squeezing them and doing other things, fabricating them in a lot of ignorance. And then we're left with headaches and aches in different parts of the body. So learn to sit with the breath for a while and just think that the breath can do the work. If you push things, okay, you're pushing the blood, and that's going to create problems. But think of the breath as being able to penetrate even the most solid parts of the body. That takes a lot of the pressure off. And then you can start thinking about which direction when I breathe in does the, the breath seem to flow most readily. Does it flow up or does it flow down? Am I making it flow up? Sometimes it's good to have the breath energy coming up to the head, especially after a meal. When all the blood seems to settle down in the stomach and your brain is deprived. Other times, though, if the energy is coming up as you're breathing, it's going to give you a headache. Hakuin, the Zen monk, talked about suffering from Zen sickness, which is basically simply the upflowing energy in the body was too strong. He would visualize a big ball of butter on top of his head, melting and coming down, down, down. So there was a sense of down-flowing energy even as he breathed in, even as he breathed out. So see what kind of perception you can hold in mind. That will help bring things back into balance. And if you can't figure anything out, just sit and watch for a while. Allow the breath to come back to its own equilibrium. What we're doing is sensitizing ourselves to this inner dimension. Because it's right here that we're going to see all the important things in the practice. When the Buddha defines suffering that we're, they're trying to overcome, he talks about form. Notice he doesn't say body, he says form, but when he defines form, it's basically these four elements, these four properties, how you experience the body from within. And when he talks about mental properties, he's not talking about electrodes or electrons moving around through your nerves. He's talking about how do you feel the brain from within. It's your mental processes. Their feelings of pleasure, pain, neither pleasure nor pain. They're your perceptions, the labels you have for things, the thought fabrications, the thoughts you put together, the intentions you have. Then there's your consciousness of all this. He's talking about right here. They want you to look at how are you creating suffering out of these things right here. And the word he uses for the suffering is upadana, which can mean clinging. It can also mean taking nourishment. You're feeding off these things. You're trying to feed off your feelings, your perceptions, your fabrications, your sense of the body inside. So you want to look into this. Exactly what are you feeding? What is this activity of feeding? It's happening. The question is, how do you catch yourself doing this? You've got to make the mind really still. And begin to notice you feed in different ways. One is just taking sensual pleasures out of things, liking to think about this beautiful sight or that nice smell or this nice sound. The food you had today, the food you're going to have tomorrow. That's one way of feeding. You have certain ideas that things should be done certain ways. That's another type of feeding. Do 
you feed off your particular sense of self? Okay, which parts of the body do you tend to identify with? Where do you think you are right now in the body? Is the body in your awareness? Is your awareness in the body? What's going on? And you find that you tend to repeat certain ideas again and again and again because you get a sense of nourishment out of it. It's that repeating. That's, that's the clinging. You've got views about all kinds of things, not just about who you are, but all kinds of things. This should be that, that should be this. And if you hold on to these things in an unskillful way, you're going to suffer. But if you approach them with the question, okay, where is the stress here? How can we comprehend the stress to the point where we can let it go? And what qualities of mind do you want to develop? Can you develop that will make it easier to let go? That's bringing the Four Noble Truths. That's bringing knowledge to the process of fabrication. So like we're sitting right here, we take this sense of the body, which can be pretty painful. We learned how to work with it. We learned how to fabricate it in new ways, ways that give rise to a sense of ease and well-being. We work on our, what the Buddha calls verbal fabrications, directing our thoughts to certain things and evaluating them. So we bring that to the breath, bring that to the way the mind relates to the breath. Then we have perceptions and feelings. That's what fabricates the mind. What kind of perceptions are we going to bring to this process of being right here? So we can create feelings of well-being that can sustain us. These are all things that you can experience right here, from within. It's simply a matter of learning to sensitize yourself to this area of your awareness. And John's and Thailand talk about making your body the path, making the breath your path. This is how you do it. You're focusing on this part of your awareness and learning how to engage with it with knowledge. So you can engage with it with skill. The word, the word for ignorance in Pali, Awicha, literally means lack of skill. And the Buddha is teaching us how to be more skillful in how we approach our awareness from within. So we can solve the problem of suffering from within, not pin our hopes on somebody outside, either a priest or a doctor or whatever. simply a matter of learning to gain a sense of what he's talking about, and use, learn how to use his concepts. So the way you deal with events coming from within gets more and more skillful. It becomes a path to something that's not fabricated at all. They talk about touching the Dharma with the body, or see, even seeing the Dharma with the body. It's not like it's a physical object you're going to touch, but it's going to be experienced right here where you're experiencing your body. But it's a different dimension. It's strange. It's here, but it's a different dimension. Language begins to break down here because, after all, language is a fabrication, and this is something unfabricated. Language operates in space and time. This is something that is not in space and time. But it can be touched here. So this is where all your attention should be. Learn how to get more and more familiar with this place. It's like knowing you're going to be mugged at a certain street corner if you're not careful. So you go down, you check out the street corner, you figure out okay, who's going to mug me, and where are the escape routes. If you're really familiar with the spot, then nobody can catch you. If you really get f familiar with your awareness as you sense it from within, Suffering can't get you, because you're not creating it. You've learned how to see through your old habits, the things you did again and again and again, simply out of force of habit, without noticing the stress and suffering they're causing. The Buddha asks you to look at that stress and suffering so you can see that your old habits really do need to be changed. And then he gives you the vocabulary and he gives you the concepts. 
so you can change those habits effectively. It's all right here. Each of us has his or her own right here. That's the right here that you're responsible for.